This is Ray. I'm here at Little Gardens Yoga Studio in Buda, Texas with my friend Ruth, and we're going to do some arm work today. We're going to walk you through some arm balances, and these are really fun exercises for kids, and Ruth here is an expert arm balancer, so she's going to be my demo student for today. We're going to start with Crow Pose. For, let's do it facing forward first and then sideways. We're going to start with Crow. And Crow is really fun for kids. This is a posture that's very accessible to a lot of children, and so they really like it. It's very empowering, and they really like to show off if they can do Crow, right? So the first thing you're going to do with your Crow is you're going to come into a squat like Ruth is. Alternatively, you can start here in a downward facing dog. And then you can walk up. So these are just two ways, different ways to get into the crow. Bend the knees and then bring the knees to the armpits. So Ruth is starting one way and I just showed you another way. It doesn't really matter, just whatever you're most comfortable with. And then you're gonna bring the hands down to the floor. From here, notice her knees are up on almost to her armpit area. They're kind of on the upper arm. So she's gonna try to get the knees really high. We'll show you a variation to this in just a moment. Now she's going to lift the hips straight up, keep the knees on the arms, and then she's going to start to come forward. Now she's really pressing into the hands, and she's going to try to lift one leg and then the other. So she's trying to get her feet off the floor so that she's in the arm balance. And notice she's looking forward. She's not looking back because if she looks back, it might make her go too far forward, but she also wants to keep her gaze straight down in front of her as opposed to looking up with the neck. Nice work. So now she's going to show you that from the side. And she has a very strong crow. So this has not come easily. This takes a lot of practice to get to the point where she's at. So if the kiddos are getting a little bit frustrated, just tell them to keep trying and we'll show you a really good alternate posture in a moment. She's going to come back into it again. She likes to come into it from a yogi squat. And then she's going to bring the knees up into the armpits. She's going to lean forward lift the toes off the floor, and then she's pressing a whole lot. She's looking about 12 inches out in front of her, and she's breathing, I can really hear her breathing. She's working hard to hold her whole body weight up onto the arms. It's a lot for the wrist to come out, and um, it's also a lot for the shoulders, but it's definitely doable. And she's in a pretty advanced posture here with her arms not quite straight, but almost straight. So the alternative posture to this is having the arms bent a whole lot more and having the knees lower down toward the elbow. So let's show them that variation because this is where kids usually start and then they work their way up to where Ruth is in her crow. So notice now her arms are much more bent, her knees are coming to the outside of the elbows, and she's lower to the ground. So this is a great alternative because first of all it's not as scary for children. And secondly, you have a little bit more leverage here because you have more of the legs on the tabletop arms. So the arms are really acting to hold up the body as opposed to the core in the variation that is the full expression that she showed you initially. Do you have anything to add that you want them to know that's really important? I don't think so. I just think like really pressing through your hands. She yeah. says really pressing through the hands is the most important. I agree. So hips up too. Now one thing, if your child or you, if you're practicing with your kids, get scared, just put a pillow right underneath the face because that way if they do fall forward, they won't be scared. And falling is also part of the fun, it's part of the practice, but you wanna make sure that you make a safe environment for the child so that if they do fall out of it, they don't hurt themselves and get scared to try it again. So now Ruth's gonna show you something really cool. She's gonna show you uh, the jump back from crow into a chaturanga into the flow. So this is how you get from a crow to a vinyasa flow. I think you should face forward for this. And then, so what she's gonna do here, she's gonna come into her crow. And because she has a really strong crow and because she's lifting her hips up nice and high, she's able to pop back into chaturanga and then flow through her vinyasa. So she's coming into an up dog and then into her down dog and then she can basically jump back through to her staff pose and be ready for any other posture that she wants to do. So if your child already has a strong crow, then you can start working some more fun things into their practice like what Ruth just showed. Very good. Next, we're gonna move on to the side crow. So for here, you're gonna do, make sure that 
they practice both sides. It's very common for one side to be stronger than the other, so we want to make sure that we even that out and keep both sides of the body nice and strong. So here, Ruth's going to come into her squat, and then she's going to turn the body to the right. So both arms are going to come over to the right. She's actually going to the left. That's okay. We can go to the left too. That's okay. Left is fine. We'll start with the left. No problem. So notice how we're both here. Okay, so what she's doing now is she's pressing in the hands, she's bending the elbows, she's placing one hip on the left arm, and then the knee on the left leg on the right arm. So the arms, again, are acting as a stool. So she's coming into the side crow, she's lifting both feet off the floor. From here you can start to do some really fun things. You can go ahead and come down. She's showing you already that you can start to straighten out the legs. So what she's going to show you next is when you get up into the side crow, you can start doing really fun things like straightening both legs or straightening one leg at a time. And then from there, once you get really strong, you can start popping back into that chaturanga, which she'll show you in a moment. But I'd like for you to show them the side crow from the side so that they can see what your feet are doing. Yeah. Perfect. So notice left hip on the left arm. Left knee on the right elbow. Her elbows are bending like in a chaturanga. So no straight arms here. If the arms are straight, you'll be able to hold yourself up. Gotta bend the arms. The arms are like tables. And then the feet are coming off the floor. And just like in the crow, notice she's looking about 8 to 10, 12 inches out in front of her. She's not looking like this. And she's not looking backwards. Very nice, Ruth. Come out of that. So I'm going to give Ruth just a little break here for a moment, and then she's going to show you those fun variations in the side curl whenever she's ready. Should we do the other side? Yeah, you should probably do the other side so that you can balance out your body. So here she goes. She's coming into side pro now on the right. Feet are lifted. She can lift her feet a little higher probably, but as long as the feet are off the ground, that's okay. And now that she's moving into this beautiful side pro, it's like a flying side pro where she's straightening through both legs. She can also try to bring both legs toward me and keep both legs. Oh yeah, she have tried that one before. So that's also a really fun variation. And you can try it again. Perfect. Very good. So one thing about that one when you're bringing both legs out straight, stay leaned into the crow. So you kind of came out of the crow. She was kind of lifting up out of it a little bit and so she was falling backwards. So if she stays leaning forward, straightening both legs, there she's got it. See, notice she stayed closer to the ground. So again, these postures can be a little bit scary when you're first starting because your face is very close to the floor. So you want to, to make sure that you have pillows or blankets or towels there so that if you do fall forward a few times, then you'll be sure not to hurt yourself. But remember, you're already very close to the floor. So if you do fall forward a little bit, you're typically not going to hurt yourself too much. Okay, awesome work. Do you want to do that on the other side to balance out? <coughs> and also just to practice a little bit more. So now we're going to see if she can get both legs extended out. She's going to stay, stay folded forward there, face close to the floor. She's going to bring both legs out. Very nice. Awesome work, Ruth. Now she popped back, chaturanga, and then she can flow through. Good job. Now on that same side, show them the flying crow with the legs split. So this is really fancy, but if your kids have the side crow, for a lot of kids this is really easy for them. Kids are super strong. Then you can start teaching them how to basically pop back into the chaturanga. Here she goes. Very nice. Upward dog. Now they're flowing through the vinyasa. And then she can come back into the seat and start any posture that she wants to do. Really good work. All right, one more posture today. This one is called shoulder, pre shoulder pressing pose. This is part of the Ashtanga primary series. So this is one that we practice often. It's really fun. So what she's going to do here is she's going to come into this one from a downward facing dog. Are we going to jump like all Yeah. So, well, if you, do you have the jump around where you hook the ankles? I don't know. All right. Well, she's going to try something fancy. And if it doesn't work, she pretty much almost did it, so good job, Ruth. All right, you want to try that again? And then we'll show the other variations. So she's going to bend the knees, jump around, and then she's going to lock the shoulders underneath the thighs. So you got to have pretty super flexy hips for this. Now she hooked the ankles. She's going to try to walk the feet underneath the, the body, so through the arms, and bring the forehead closer to the floor. 
So eventually her feet will be back behind her. And you can tell she's working really hard to get those feet back. This is not an easy posture. It's very advanced. But because kids are strong and flexible, then they love to try this. It's so fun. And notice she just fell backwards on her booty. And it didn't hurt at all, so it's okay. You can fall out of this one. I fall out of this one all the time. Now, in order to come out of this one, it's really fun. You're going to try to lift the booty and straighten through both legs. Point the toes. There you go. Beautiful pose. Now she's going to bend both knees. She's going to come back through, trying to get back into that crow that we practiced. And then she can flow through or she can rest. <laughs> really hard, right? Yes. So fun. Now she's going to show you the first thing she did where she jumped straight into it. That's really hard. I tried to do that yesterday and I fell flat. So she's going to try it. And if she falls, that's okay because that's part of the fun. That's also part of the learning experience. So you just need to be a little bit patient and try it over and over and over and eventually you'll get it. So concentrate, you're gonna jump around, hook those ankles right there. She did, it was perfect. Now she's gonna start to bring the feet underneath the body, legs out, moving back through the crow, press it back, downward facing dog. Very nice route. All right, let's try it one more time from the side so that they can see what it looks like from the side. So you don't have to do that fancy jump around. You can just walk the elbows under. And so let's go slowly through this time. So first, she's going to walk the elbows under, just in case you need to see it again. And now, notice how she's getting her shoulders all the way underneath the knees. That's the hard part for most adults because our hips are tighter. Once she does that, gets the shoulders up under the legs. Now, pressing into the hands. She's bringing the feet around. She's hooking the ankles. She's trying to get the feet now under the body. So this is the hard part. This is where it takes a lot of upper body strength. So she's still working on this, but that's okay. She's trying to get the feet back underneath the body and bringing the forehead eventually to the floor. And once that happens, then she'll be in full expression of the posture. But right now, this is a really great place to be. She's working really hard to lift up, to get the seat off the floor. Notice how many times she tried. It's also great for strengthening the body, the arms, the shoulders. And then she can try to come out of it with the straight legs. And then you don't have to pop back if you have to. But that's just you know part of the fun is trying all these different variations with that posture. And with that particular posture, there's so many different ways to um, think about it in terms of what your goals are for the posture. And basically just trying it and having fun with it is where I would start. And I would just start encouraging the child or the student, whoever you're working with, to just start and try it because this posture can be really intimidating for people. And a lot of times people won't even try it because they're like, oh, I'm never going to be able to do that. I actually kind of thought that the first time I saw it. I was like, I'm never going to be able to do that. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to skip postures because we think that they're not accessible because the beauty of yoga is there's lots of different modifications and variations for postures. So if you are intimidated by lifting up onto the arms and trying to get the seat off the floor, then just start working on the hip opening. And that would basically just look like trying to get the shoulders up under the thighs. So being right here is a really great place. And then this is where you are, that's great. Or maybe you start to lock the shoulders farther under the thighs where Ruth is. And then maybe this is where you are and you can stay here for a while, maybe even a year. And then very slowly start to work into the arm balance or never, right? Beauty of yoga is there's always a new place to go, but wherever you want to go is where you want to go. All right. With that, those are our three arm balancing postures for today. In summary, we did crow pose, and then we did side crow with those fun variations where you extend the legs out and then split the legs open. You can also start to have more fun with that by popping back into the chaturanga from any of those variations and flowing through the vinyasa, getting back into your down dog. And then third, we worked on shoulder pressing pose, which as you can see from Ruth, who's a very strong yogi, it's a very challenging pose, but super fun for kids, right? It's one of your favorites, yeah. right? So when I asked her which arm balances we wanted to teach, that was her first answer because even though it's very challenging, it's really fun, all right? So signing off from Low Garden Yoga Studio, thanks for joining us for this short arm balancing tutorial, and I hope you and your kids have a lot of fun trying these fun postures. Namaste. Namaste.